Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the 30-minute chart of gold with the volume included. And we had the statement, very strange statement by Ms. Yellen today about why the Fed is putting off a hike in interest rates. If you remember, uh, when they first raised in December, there was a lot of doubt as to whether or not they'd raise rates at all in December. I think Peter Schiff said that he, he was ha he was 50-50 as to whether they would actually do it. And then they, en they ended up raising rates and they announced they were going to do, I think it was four rates, uh, rate increases in the next year. So it's already mid-March and they balked on the next increase. And I'm going to get into that story here. You can see the, the volume on the gold spike there. Um, it's not outlandish volume and it's not really that big of a move relatively you can see we've had a lot of spikes in gold had a similar one there uh, same sort of thing there another one here another one here and then we get sell-offs it's still kind of looking like a bull market but we're going to look, examine the very strange statement made by Ms. Yellen in uh, deciding to balk on this this rate increase but we before we do that I wanted to talk a little bit about the election and this is one of the few elections that's actually got me excited and, and the reason why it gets me excited is because um, the just to look on the sidelines and see all of the people who are aligned against Donald Trump uh, and uh, this is very unusual because you know in the past you'd see um, certain segments align against the candidate but but in this election we're actually seeing segments across the spectrum from the far right we've got we've got the far right with ted cruz and uh well it, it's hard to define those things but let's just say ted cruz and glenn beck and, and then we've got the kind of the rhino republicans uh we've got boehner and ryan and and all the rest of these Kasich and all these middle Republicans and they're just adamantly opposed to Donald Trump we've got anyone on the left we've got the far left we've got every single person allied against Donald Trump I go back and forth between trying to decide whether or not um, this is a groundswell of of people supporting him against the establishment just a true rebellion against the establishment or if this isn't actually a plan by the establishment to put him in power, it's it's so bizarre. Um, it's almost like it's too obvious. Why would they, why would they tip their hand to such an extent? We do have uh, uh, the fat man in New Jersey uh, coming in on Trump's side, and and a few people coming in on his side, but. But for the most part, there's a universal alliance against him. And now they're talking about uh, Boehner has said that he wants to see Paul Ryan as a, a brokered convention candidate. So a lot of strange stuff. But I want you to watch this video. This is a, one of my favorite channels now. It's called You Can't Stump the Trump. And one of the reasons why Trump has such appeal, he's kind of like Reagan was back in the day. He's fearless. He doesn't care what people think. He's not politically correct. And he just, he goes all out. So let's watch a little bit of this. I'm going to jump to the end after a, a bit here. Despite its impressive length, it's a nimble navigator. And some can be highly venomous. I only tell the truth, lobbyists. Just like the tarantula it's killing, the centipede has two curved hollow fangs, which inject paralyzing venom. Yeah, maybe get the, the remnant out. Is a out, out, out. You admonish. It's Rubio. My mom is the strongest woman I know. She should this be running. Uh, Jeb Bush said, my mom is the strongest woman I know. And Trump replied, she should be running. You can hear that from the other candidates. They don't say anything anyway. So this is a documenting an attempt by the far left, or who knows, uh, trying to disrupt, disrupt uh, Trump 
rallies, and it happens all over the country. He had to cancel the Chicago rally and uh, almost had to cancel the Kansas one. And, and these people obviously don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in free speech. It's, it's, and, you know, you see Trump say, get them out. But th these are people who want to disrupt things. They're not, these aren't protesters. There's plenty of places you can protest. They're disruptors as he describes them. So let's continue. There used to be consequences. There are none anymore. So that's it. All right, thank you very much. Go ahead. Go no. ahead. Don't get nervous. It can't stop the Trump. Oh no. This looks bad, lads. Will this finally stump the Trump? So if you remember this so-called scandal this gal was trying to question Trump after he'd finished a press conference and she you can see she comes up and and tries to grab him basically and you can see a secret service guy this is a footage that came out later she had claimed that she was thrown to the ground by Trump's people and you can see that's not at all what happened this guy just came up and stopped her and uh, that's the secret services job they they have to protect the candidate we've already seen uh, one guy come running at, at Trump. We'll see that a little bit later. Oh, it's nothing. Someone must answer for this failed attempt to stump the Trump. Holy shit. You're fired. Screw you! You're fired! So let's skip forward to the end here You're with the You're three fired. pathetic candidates here. You thought you could stomp the... Then, lads, the show is... Right? How do I need it? You know why I need it? Because I've done great. I love this country. We're going to make our country great again. I owe... It's payback time. It's payback time. Surely, such a ride will be what finally, finally, finally stumps the Trump. Pack it in. Lads, the show is over. But we begin our second hour today with the results from Super Tuesday 2, the first one. Donald Trump notches his first win of the day in the Mariana Islands. Welcome. A huge win we project for Donald Trump in Florida. Donald Trump will win all 99, all 99 delegates. Winner take all in Florida. CNN projects Donald Trump is the big winner in Florida tonight. Huge win for Donald Trump. Foolish little foam boy. You thought you could stomp the Trump? Where uh, it is so, so crucial. And in Florida right now, we can comfortably say as polls close that Donald Trump has beaten Marco Rubio in his home state. <laughs> It's 8 o'clock on the East Coast, which means polls have now closed in three more states, including the crucial state of Florida, where Fox News projects that Donald Trump will easily beat Florida Senator Marco Rubio in that state's... <laughs> we have a race call. Fox News can now project that Donald Trump will defeat Ted Cruz in the... So if you look at those, I mean, really, if you've been watching this thing unfold, these slimy characters... Ted Cruz, John Kasich, and Marco Rubio, the way they have behaved, the way that those three all came out and blamed Donald Trump for basically a communist uh, attempt to shut down his uh, speech in Chicago, and, and that these slimy creatures, this these guys are a representation of, of rhinos. These are these are Republicans in name only. These None of these people are true conservatives. In fact, my best guess is these people are blackmailed. Um, they're owned by the other party or by another government. I don't know who controls these people. But these aren't real conservatives. You've got Ted Cruz on the far right. He's not even a citizen, and he's not, in my opinion, even really a conservative. John Kasich 
is a, a just a traditional rhino Republican and Marco Rubio. I don't even know what he is, honestly, to tell you the truth. Now, with, with Trump, he admittedly is an unknown quantity. In my opinion, he's kind of in the school of Reagan, and uh, there, there's a chance with Trump. The only thing I'll say in his favor, the only thing I can say in his favor, is there's a chance that he's legit. I highly doubt it. There's probably a 90% chance it's just a scam. But with the other ones, it's a 100% chance that it's a scam. Illinois Republican presidential primary, according to Fox exit polls and early vote tallies. Just because we want to show you what has happened in North Carolina, Fox News is projecting that Donald Trump has won North Carolina right now. You can see that on your screen. And people are very frustrated. It really began back in 2007, 2008, with this horrifying downturn. So this guy, does anybody believe this guy is a, a serious presidential candidate? We've seen multiple times this unprofessional, incompetent person who has no confidence. Is that a serious contender? Has he ever been? While it is not God's plan that I be president in 2016 or, or maybe ever, and while today my campaign is suspended, The fact that Corey, good job, Corey. Good job. You will call up Terry, the president. I guess I have to do it myself. It's Rubio. Oh. Oh. So again, Trump may be, I, I, I like to think of it in terms of idiocracy where you had, if you haven't seen the movie, you ended up with a wrestling uh, champion as the president of the United States. And it's starting to look like that may be the case. But uh, if that's the case, then so be it. Because it's so obvious that these other candidates, uh, Kasich, Rubio, and Cruz, and uh, obviously this Bush character, uh, there's no question that these people have nothing but um, ulterior motives. Uh, we saw in the 2012 election when the Republicans came in in what could be called a landslide, um, they immediately started to pass legislation that was a betrayal of their base. So really, I think most Republicans probably feel the way I do. Um, they've already destroyed their party. It, 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 uh, it doesn't really matter at this point uh, whether their party is destroyed by having a person they oppose take it over or if they try to cheat him out of the nomination and he goes third party and the Republican Party is dismantled. They've already completely betrayed all conservatives and uh, so... Most people say, let's bring it on. Let's let's put Donald Trump in there and see what he can do. So that's that's what I'm thinking on that. Now let's get to this uh, Janet Yellen answer, we'll call it. Very, very strange response here. This is the Zero Hedge article. Here is what Janet Yellen answered when Steve Leisman, Steve Leisman asked if the Fed has a credibility problem. The most amusing moment of today's Janet Yellen press conference occurred when none other than Steve Leesman asked Yellen a question, one which he may regret as it is dangerously close to Pedro da Costa territory, which goes to the heart of the matter. Does the Fed have a credibility problem? The jarring cognitive dissonance appears to have finally hit Leesman, who finally asked the question, Madam Chair, as you know, inflation has gone up the last two months. We had another strong jobs report. The tracking forecast for GDP have returned to 2%, and yet the Fed stands pat while is in a process of what is what it said at launch in December was a process of normalization. 
So I have two questions about this. Does the Fed have a credibility problem in the sense that it says it will do one thing under certain conditions but doesn't end up doing it? And then frankly, if the current conditions are not sufficient for the Fed to raise rates, well, what would those conditions look like? So um, first of all, let's point out this comment here that the Fed, and it did say that it was in the process uh, beginning a process of normalization. So let's take a look at the Fed funds rate here. This is a snapshot of the Fed funds rate starting in uh, late 2008, early 2009. This is basically Obama's inauguration. Uh, so that's, you can see right there, that bottom is December 29th. So uh, this that's a statement in and of itself that we have a president whose entire term uh, is at zero percent interest rates that's a that that's an amazing uh, indictment of somebody in and of itself that his entire presidency a two-term presidency was spent at zero percent interest rates but you can see here's the uptick after that unbelievable and unprecedented period of time of zero interest rates and here's the tiny tiny uptick compared to look you can see in 2007 we were above five percent on the fed funds rate it dropped all the way down to zero within a year and it stayed that way for eight years now here's the tiny tick up and we've got janet yellen panicking at another interest rate increase which would be basically 0.25 which again is just a target because you can see here that the target range is 0.25 to 0.5, but the actual effective uh, rate is just right in the middle. So really, if they did another quarter point raise, it would just take it up to 0.5 effectively, maybe 0.65 or something like that. So nothing to speak of, but the Fed's afraid to raise rates. So let's listen to the answer here. The answer was a 261 word jumbled nightmare of James Joycean stream of consciousness interspersed with high end econo babble that we, for one, were completely unable to follow. This is what Yellen responded verbatim quote, Well, let me start. Let me start with the question of the Fed's credibility. And you used the word promises in connection with that. And as I tried to emphasize in my opening statement, the paths that the participants project for the federal funds rate and how it will evolve are not a preset plan or commitment or promise of the committee. Indeed, they are not even, the median should not be interpreted as a committee endor endorsed forecast. And there's a lot of uncertainty around each participant's projection and they will evolve. Those assessments of appropriate policy are completely contingent on each participant's forecasts of the economy and how economic events will unfold. And they are, of course, uncertain. And you should fully expect that forecasts for the appropriate path of policy on the part of all participants will evolve over time as shocks, positive or negative, hit the economy that alter those forecasts. So you have seen a shift this time in most participants' assignments of the appropriate path for policy. As I tried to indicate, I think that largely reflects a somewhat slower projected path for global growth, for growth in the global economy outside the United States, and for some tightening in credit conditions in the form of an increase in spreads. And those changes in financial conditions and in the path of the global economy have induced changes in the assessment of individual participants in what the path is appropriate to achieve our objectives. So that's what you see. That's what you see now. Got that? Okay, so let me try to parse this for you. Actually, for me, this seems to be a pretty clear message. I think one of the key words here uh, is individual, actually, which is used a number of times, and uh, participants. So what I gather from this is that what Yellen is saying essentially is that we have no leadership and I'm not a leader. 
the participants are determining what the path is. I don't control them. Uh, they have their own vote. This is a democracy. And then there's a mention here that outside influences, the influence of economies outside of the United States determine interest rates that the Federal Reserve sets. So it, it seems to me a fairly clear statement, actually, although it's very convoluted. The statement to me is very clear. We have no leadership and I'm not your leader and I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, that's pretty much what she said. So uh, you can see the reaction that we got out of the gold market. Uh, there's a question as to whether there's going to be carry through on this. I pointed out already how we've had these um, rallies out of nowhere. This is nothing new. So the question is, will this, this rally continue? A lot of people, including Clive Mond, with his commitment of traders report, which I don't put a lot of stock in, but a lot of people have said that this is this is a serious intermediate term top here, and uh, that may very well be the case. But with the action today, uh, it very well maybe not, and we might actually rally from here. And we'll talk to you next time.